The injury string continues as fantasy owners are now going to be without a few of the top receivers in the game in addition to a plethora of running back injuries. And what should fantasy owners do after some disappointing performances from Russell Wilson and Eli Manning? while guys like Tom Brady and Cam Newton had bounce back games. We'll also give you guys our waiver wire rankings for week seven and answer your questions from YouTube and Twitter. It's all up on today's episode of the Fantasy Football Swagger Podcast. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Fantasy Football Swagger Podcast. My name is Nick, also known as Clickwood, and I am joined, as always, by my partner in crime, Dustin, also known as Project KSL. How are you doing, buddy? Pretty good. How about you? Doing well, doing well. Another tough week for injuries, man. Yeah. Just absolutely ridiculous. Victor Cruz, torn, uh, what was it, torn patella tendon yeah. or something just awful patella like tendon. that. Yeah. I don't even know what that is, but I don't want to know. Sounds just horrendous. <laughs> Steven Ridley tore his ACL. Yeah, Stephen Ridley. Well, I don't know if that's really that big, but no, no, no the guy getting <laughs> I'm hurt. Just, but I, one of the big ones, no Sean Moreno yeah, too. Uh, ACL, ACL he's going to be out for the year. Darren Sproles has a what? What are they calling a Brain slight MCL, MCL tear? Brain something MCL. like that. Yeah. I mean, that's like it's it's just a bunch of tough injuries, and in, when you add that up with the combination of guys like Jimmy Graham, who now it sounds like he's going to miss between two to three games after yep. their bye week, which happened this past week, so yep. we might not have Jimmy Graham back until week 10 at this point, and we got Calvin Johnson, who we still don't have a timetable for his return, AJ yeah, that's, Green, that's he doesn't necessarily scary. sound that optimistic about being able to play. It's, I mean, what's happened is exactly why you always have to have depth on your bench, yeah. man. It, it's so yep. funny, a couple weeks go by, and nobody gets hurt, and everyone's thinking, oh, I can drop this this guy why did i take this no. guy whatever the case like this is why you hang on to those players because you still have a decent reliable guy when a guy like aj green or someone goes down exactly it's why you don't trade the world to to get one player yeah um you know i mean obviously we want to we want to have our rosters be stacked with as many superstars as we can in fantasy football but it's like when you're when you're missing out on quality players and backups for your guys Man, it, it can be so quick. You can go from being that five and one team to that team that's you know going to struggle to put up a win for the remainder of the year. And yeah, I mean, it it really it, sucks. It's exactly why stars and studs are almost, or excuse me, studs and duds almost never works out in auction drafts. Yeah, because it's. I mean, if if you can nail all your studs and guys who don't get hurt, cool. But if you have yeah. one injury, it ruins your team. And that's exactly right. why if, seasons like this. Exactly. If you do studs and duds, I always say that you have to take chances. First of all, you have to big handcuff chances. all your studs. Yeah, big chances. Um, and and you have to take huge chances on on guys who are completely unproven. Yeah. Tons of one dollar players. Um, yeah. and, and it it doesn't always work out for you. Almost never works I, out. Seems great yeah, day I, one. It's like, oh man, I got all these great players, but the best player on your bench at that point is like Jacoby Jones. And it's like, well, <laughs> what the hell am I going to do with this at any point? You know, that's the thing right. like it always happens. Right. Absolutely. So, I mean, uh, you know, you add that to the list of all these guys that are injured. And I mean, the wide receiver position right now is getting real thin, especially yeah. when you've got guys, even guys like Julio Jones came out of Sunday's game a little injured. And I mean, it sounds like he's going to play this week. I don't think that's going to be much of an issue. But, you know, you start to add up all these injuries with these guys. And it's like, man, half of the top 10 wide receivers are injured right now. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's wild. I mean, if there was a redraft right now, I have to think the top three off the board in some capacity would be Jordy Nelson, Demarius Thomas, and Antonio Brown. Because all three of those guys, I mean, Demarius yeah. is finally fully healthy again, and he's just been a monster the last couple weeks. So that yeah, offense, I could... too. I mean, Jordy's been consistent and great. Antonio Brown, same thing with all the injuries. I have to think they'd be the one, two, three in a redraft. Yeah, I, I would probably have to agree with that as well. I, I know there's going to be people that are going to comment, Steve Smith, what about Steve oh, Smith? Yeah, okay, if you know. believe Steve Smith is going to stay on the pace that he's on, yeah, If you think he outscores you know, the Thomas but, after 16, yeah, then okay, but I yeah. don't think so in any way. Yeah, I, I don't think that's going to happen. I mean, not to mention the fact that Steve Smith has not had his bye week yet. Demarius yeah. Thomas has. And, and I mean, the fact that Demarius Tom. Thomas is, I mean, he had all those dud games and he's still a top 10 wide receiver because he was hurt. He had the foot injury, had the bye week completely healthy now. Yep. And just number number off. five wide receiver in standard scoring. Yeah, despite just, the fact that he's already had his bye. Yeah, unreal. <laughs> so I mean, yeah. you, you want to give Steve Smith some credit. I was clearly wrong. I think most people were about his role yep. in that offense. He's clearly become mm -hmm. Joe Flacco's go-to guy. 
And he's oh, a yeah. very valuable wide receiver, but he's not on that tier. Although Torrey Smith this past week. Told you. Two touchdowns. I told you you didn't want to drop him quite yet. Yeah, well. Granted, you know, it's Tampa, I mean, and they yeah. everyone caught TD If, game, if you but. started him, good for you. If you didn't, um, <laughs> it's hard you to know, blame you. Yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of, are you going to start him going forward now? No, I don't no. think so. Got, well, I mean, you got to wait. Um, I mean, if he keeps a roll like that, you yeah. know, he shows a knack for doing it. But, yeah, you can't yeah, If Joe Flacco's team. throwing five touchdowns a week, yeah, right, I'm starting, yeah, exactly. I'm starting Torrey Smith. But I, I don't see that happening It's not going to surprise soon. anyone if Joe Flacco goes out there and scores. If the Ravens offense goes out there and scores 10 points next week, I think no one will be surprised. <laughs> Right, right. So let's let's talk a little bit about some of these situations, though. Uh, Victor Cruz injury. I want to I want to ask you: Does that do anything for the other guys in the offense? Yeah. I mean, Ruben Randall, Odell Beckham get a slight uptick. Yeah, or, I think I mean, they have to. Yeah, yeah, I mean that's that's the number one target guy in their offense going down. So those targets mm-hmm. got to go somewhere else, you know. Yep. I mean, and, and I expect how to how much are you upgrading him though? And which which one of the wow. two do you like better? Oh, I, I'd prefer to have Ruben Randall because I think he yep, knows the too. offense better. He's been around there yep. longer and he has a better repertoire with Eli Manning. But yep. Uh, yeah, I still think Odell Beckham will have a role, too. I think they'll both be sustainable, depending on how that offense looks. But, again, I mean, the Giants offense looks so bad week one. It looks so good the next couple weeks. It looks bad last week. <laughs> they're they're so hot and cold. It's really yeah. tough to rely on that offense. So It is. Yeah, I, I think it that I'd, I'd rather have – I'd prefer to have Ruben Randall. He probably takes a somewhat significant upgrade. But Odell Beckham slightly. And then, you know, Larry Donnell I don't think sees much of a difference because he seems like a TD guy and uh, – Maybe a guy like Andre Williams or Rashad James when he gets back catches a few more balls a game, but not not super significant. Yeah, I I think so too. Um, I I mean the other the other guy that I'm really looking at here as seeing a significant upgrade in value is Lamar Miller, no, and uh, you guys he's, know he's a top twelve running back rest of the way for me. Right. Yeah, I I think he's right up there. I mean, he's certainly uh, borderline RB one in my yeah. opinion oh, when yeah, when Moreno's running. out yeah. and. It's it's not like I love Lamar Miller's skills. It's just that opportunity. I mean, they have a decent team. They they can move the ball on offense. It's not a terrible offense yeah, like so many of these like other Jaguars situations. Or anything. Yeah, and, so, and not Lamar Miller is he's really physically talented. It's just always been a matter of you know, is he too tentatively runs? Yeah, there's just he has a couple my, like almost uh, mental issues. You know that he has to overcome. Yeah. But the talent's yeah, always yeah. been there with him. Yeah, that's that's fair enough. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I I think Lamar Miller. You know, I I looked at the situation and it was like, okay, this past week when we when we were doing our um, our, our studs and and uh, busts for this upcoming yeah. week, um, I chose No. Sean Moreno as my the guy sleeper. who I expected to be a, a good sleeper. Yeah. yeah, and it didn't work out obviously because he got injured. And it was only fifty fifty split too with Miller. Right, and I I mean obviously I think. You know, I came into the game expecting a little bit more from Moreno as far as like number of carries, but even yeah. still, if if he got just the the uh, a slight uptick in carries and, and was able to get that goal line carry, he's you know a very valuable player for the week. But uh, like I said, it's the situation that I like. It's not necessarily the player. So I yeah. definitely like Lamar Miller going forward. I think he's the guy who gets the biggest upgrade out of this entire situation of injuries out of all the players. Yeah, so I'd agree with that. So I, I definitely am looking to acquire him. If somebody in your league doesn't start Lamar Miller currently, uh, you know, they're stacked at running back for whatever reason and you're hurting at running back, he's somebody I'm targeting right now as uh, not necessarily even a buy low, just somebody who people might not realize what quite what the value is with him. Um, other guys, Darren Sproles being injured. Uh, I mean, we've talked about this a little bit. I don't necessarily think it, incre- it really increases LaShawn uh, McCoy's value much, but Chris right. Polk possibly uh as being a, a guy who could just you know come in and take some extra carries because somebody's going to need to take a little bit of that work away from yeah. mccoy if they want to keep him healthy yeah. i don't necessarily think he becomes significantly fantasy relevant or anything but right. um i mean you know f- you know 10 touches a game possibly well I, I i see i don't even know if i'd even commit to that for him i don't know i think it might just increase LaShawn mccoy's workload it might. You know, I, I, it might. I don't know about super significantly, but yeah. I, I, I don't think that. Again, I mean, my whole thing was I thought Darren Sproles is a different role, anyways. Right. Chris Polk isn't Correct. taking that role. He's into he's a borderline fullback. So <laughs> true. Yeah. True. It, it's. I don't know. I, I think Lachum McCoy's value probably sees some increase because Darren Sproles going down, but it's believed to be a pretty minor injury. With Sproles, I think, are only expecting to miss a couple weeks. Well, Jimmy Graham's injury was supposed to be minor too, yeah, as was Calvin Johnson's, yeah. as is AJ Green. So we look at all these situations, and it's like. Uh, these injury reports lie. I mean, yeah. the, the honest truth is, if somebody has an injury to a knee ligament, 
we don't know when they're coming back. Yeah, it's hard I to mean, know severity of sprains. So. Right. I mean, and it could just be, okay, so let's say he comes back onto the field. Yeah, but is he then still Darren Sproles? Or is he some other guy that's wearing Darren Sproles' jersey? You know yeah, what I mean? Exactly. Because uh, Darren Sproles makes his money on being explosive and making those cuts and really getting the big plays. And if he is tentative to cut, if he you know has any sort of hesitation at all, if his knee is bothering him, he's not going to be the guy that we're, that we're used to. Right. So I think uh, Darren Sproles' value now is uh, pretty significantly decreased here, even when he does come back, until we see really what the situation is. And even then, uh, his role, I mean, his value had been decreasing by itself. Correct. The best correct. I mean, I think, I'm pretty sure, yeah, he was one of our sell highs. Yes, early in the games. season. Yeah, early. And yeah. that seemed like pretty smart now, because he really yeah. has taken a huge step back in, like, on-field production. He has, yep. And, and, I mean, we expected that, of course. But uh, another guy who did see a pretty significant increase in value, and this is a guy who I had as one of my sleepers coming into the year, uh, and that is Mohamed Sanu. And Mohamed Sanu is uh, a guy who was producing with A.J. Green on the field but became suddenly their wide receiver one when A.J. Green went down. So big game from him this past week. Do you think that he is at all sustainable, at least while A.J. Green is out wow. as being a potential like wide receiver two, wide receiver three option? I mean, it's tough because Marvin Jones is coming back, so you're going to have to deal with that. Eventually. We'll yeah. see, though. We've been expecting him back for two weeks now, and he still right. isn't back. So. Yeah, I mean, I expect when Marvin Jones comes on, he'll take a significant, like, or somewhat significant role in that offense, too, and then it might just True. be, you know, who's ever hotter that day will get the, the better fantasy day, I suppose. But, I mean... For short term, yeah. I mean, I think Sanu's probably, uh, you know, depending on what kind of league you're in, he could start for most weeks for the until AJ Green comes back. Yeah, I mean, if if we're looking at it as being like a, if you're especially if you're in a three wide receiver start every week, oh yeah, league, absolutely, that, he's yeah. he's an unquestioned starter right now. Um, I certainly think he's a quality flex, especially in PPR leagues. Yeah. Um, wide receiver two, I think he's kind of right on that border. I, I'd say he's probably somewhere between twenty twenty five ish. Low end wide receiver two. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, decent value there, but definitely somebody who is, is if he's on the waiver wire right so now, I would be out there him picking him up. Yeah, definitely yeah. worth picking up for waivers. Yep, okay. Uh, and then I wanted to also talk a little bit about some of the quarterback situations. We touched on the monster game from Joe Flacco. Um, obviously, he didn't need to continue putting up points after they had just been blowing them out early in the, in the game. Um, but I think that there are some other guys, Tom Brady, Colin Kaepernick, Cam Newton, all those guys big bounce back games from what they had been doing earlier in the season. Right. Whereas we see guys like Eli Manning and Russell Wilson, who'd been really, really hot, suddenly take a significant step back and, and basically didn't do anything this week. So, I mean, it, are any of these situations ones that you're monitoring? I mean, are you buying in that Russell Wilson's now not a good quarterback? Are you buying in? I, I don't think you're buying in on Tom Brady, but are you <laughs> buying in on Cam Newton as being back to Cam Newton after what we saw this past week? Cam's the one that I think of all of them that I would put some stock into because the, the thing with Cam is that we've all known his offensive line is trash, but they really haven't been running him. And this was the first week right, all season right, where right. it seems like he actually was getting his legs back. But they're yes. more willing to let him run and go down the field. So yeah, I definitely think that he's he his game just and just his movement is something that was really positive to see for him. Yes. Everyone else I don't really think so. Tom Brady's had two good games out of what, six, and he's just been <laughs> asked for four, good for two, so no. Yeah, Kaepernick. Right. I, I think Flacco. That, yeah, nothing. Kaepernick played the Rams. They're they're abysmal this year. The team has one yeah. sack. They're terrible. And, the and it's also I think it's also important to note that he didn't do anything in the first half of that yeah, game. I, I now, know. granted, we we get points for the full game, but it's a little bit concerning to me that they weren't able to do a damn versus thing. They put up zero points. Too. Yeah, versus yeah. a team that bad. Yeah, that's got to be some level some concern. Yeah, I thought, I don't care about Kaepernick. I think Russell Wilson was abysmal, but. He's been pretty damn good the other games, and, and mm-hmm. Dallas' defense has been a big surprise. So I, I think that, that there will be he, – he'll rebound. I think he, I'm still fine with him. I'm not worried about it. Tom Brady, I still feel the same way I did. Cam mm-hmm. is the one that I think I do see some some increase in value. Yeah, me too. Uh, Cam Newton it was somebody who I was uh, definitely on board with selling this past week. But, uh, you know, when we see a guy go from – zero carries week one and and four two two carries and then six in week five and then all of a sudden 17 for 107 and a touchdown in week yeah. six okay that won't happen now, week, now right? you got my attention cam newton yeah. <laughs> um i'm not expecting him to ever run the ball 17 times yeah, again that should not happen but 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 the big thing for me is that they they were running design quarterback runs yeah, with they're him. willing to let him run 
And, and that's so significant for Cam Newton's fantasy value because outside of Kelvin Benjamin and, and I guess Greg Olson, he really has jack shit for wide receivers yeah, or, or receiving options. Too. Yeah, so uh, his value is really predicated on the his ability to run the football. So that's why I, I definitely am taking uh, an increase for Cam Newton, and hopefully he will continue to do that. He's got a good uh, matchup this week against Green Bay, so... Hopefully he's able to exploit that a little bit. And then uh, after that, he's got a, a real tough matchup against Seattle. So it'll be interesting to see what he does in a good matchup and a bad matchup over the next two weeks and just kind of, you know, gauging what he's uh, worth going forward. Yeah. So uh, last thing that I wanted to touch on here before we get into our waiver wire rankings, I want to kind of discuss some of these running back situations that just kind of seem to be a, a, for lack of a better word, a clusterfuck. Yeah. Uh, we have the Rams running back situation and we have the Cleveland uh, Browns running back situation and the Jacksonville Jaguars running back situation. Uh, Rams this past week, Benny Cunningham, I guess, uh, I mean, he was the, the better fantasy player, I guess. Yeah. Um, Zach Stacy basically didn't do anything, but Trey Mason is actually getting a lot of hype this week. And I'm, I'm not sure that I'm necessarily on board with that, Right. but, but I mean, I don't think there's really anybody that I love in this offense. And same thing with Jacksonville. I mean, Storm Johnson yeah, is somebody that's... that I've kind of had on my radar as being like a deep guy. If you're in a, a 16 team, a 14 team league where you need somebody just for like a couple of weeks here that he might be the guy. But like, I, I don't love any of those situations. That's pretty much what I was about to say. I think the Rams situation is real similar to the Jaguars and that starting back, sorry, starting running back is good and all. But if you're not scoring TDs consistently at right. all, it's really, really tempers the value. Bad offenses. Yeah, they're terrible. Bad, so bad it, offenses. It, it's tough. You can say, like, yeah, I think that Zach Stacy still be the right starter there, which he probably will be. But yeah. that's why I hated Zach Stacy going into the year. I didn't think the Rams were going to score shit. I, I hated yeah. Zach Stacy. I want nothing to do with him for his second or third round ADP. I thought that was ridiculous. It was. Yep. Yeah. And Absolutely. So, so, like, that. And same thing, I think, with, at this point, Jacksonville and Tampa Bay are the same sort of things where... You can tell me this guy's going to get the carries, but if he ends the game with no TDs and 50 yards, he drops a five in standard, and that's just unbearable. Yeah, yeah. unless he's catching six, five, six passes yeah. a game, it's not valuable. Yeah. I, I don't if, value you're in any, PPR. I don't value anyone in that Jacksonville backfield really at all. I think yeah. any of those guys is a super low end running back, like three for yeah. a flex or something. Yeah, and then it's pretty much the same with St. Louis at this point. Zach Stacy, I probably value a little bit higher than the rest of the guys, but. Yeah. You're in a bad spot if you're relying on Zach Stacy week to week. Absolutely. <laughs> very, very yeah. true right now. Um, Cleveland running back situation, though, we have a little bit more optimism about that. Yeah, ben absolutely. Tate looks really good since coming back. I mean, he's he's cemented himself right now, in my opinion, as being an, an RB1 in yeah, fantasy probably. for the remainder of the year, provided that he stays healthy. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and that's always been the concern. So being that that is the concern... I think that the guy who has established himself as being kind of his handcuff and maybe even somebody who has a little bit of value on his own, Isaiah Crowell, has definitely stepped up. He scored this past last. week. Yeah, definitely. Yes. So, I mean, it, we've talked about this a lot over the past two weeks. You have to make sure that you have some sort of backup option. So <laughs> rather than rostering some of these guys who you're never going to play ever on your team, you know, we talked about Torrey Smith, for example. I would rather have Isaiah Crowell on my roster right now than Torrey Smith. And I know Torrey Smith's coming off a big game. I don't believe it. <laughs> I yeah. don't believe in the situation. I don't believe Joe Flacco is going to be sustaining uh, multiple receivers for fantasy relevance like we talked about. So a, a guy like him, I would drop instantly to pick up Isaiah Crowell right now because I, if I have Ben Tate because I need to make sure that if Ben Tate goes down that I am not screwed. Right. I, I, I will say, though, that I think that if Ben Tate does go down, it does go into a timeshare with West. But I think the crowd will probably yeah. be the more significant player in that. The goal line carries is the key here. Yeah. And, and that and also I just think that they I think Crowell will see a more of the carries. I just don't think it'll yeah. be. I think it'd probably be like a 70 30 split on a good day, I think. for Fair enough. Crowell. But so that's yeah. sort of concerning, I guess. But yeah. It, and also Alex Mack going down that that's a big that is for that offensive line. It because is. We kind of got to see what Ben Tate does with post Alex Mack because he's, you know, he's an elite center. You lose right. a player like that, that's going to affect a running game. But Hoyer's Correct. been real good, you know, for them. The Browns are, are the Browns can realistically be undefeated pretty easily, you know, yeah. as crazy as that is. So, it yeah, is. I, I think that that's a situation a lot of people underestimated, and uh, it's paying off for the people that trusted in Ben Tate because he's rewarding. 
He is, and, and if you kept him on your roster through those couple of weeks that he was out, man, he's, like Dustin said, he is definitely making you look like a genius right now, so we definitely love to see that. But let's talk about some of the guys who could potentially help you on the waiver wire this week if you're in a situation where you've got an injury or something like that from this past week. I wanted to give, just like we do every week, I want to give you a quick rundown of my top 10. Um, I, I have, at number one, I don't know how this is possible, okay? I, I am scratching my head. I had to double check it. I checked on multiple sources. Um, an ESPN columnist wrote about it as well. Look, Ronnie Hillman right now is owned, owned in 5% of ESPN leagues. 5%. The guy had over 100 yards this week, and he's the RB1 right now in Denver. Yeah, now, granted, I not lose the job either. Yeah. So. Now, now, granted, he's still giving up a little bit of carries to some of the other randoms Jordan that they have on the roster. Jordan Thompson. But, I mean, yeah. For, for what the situation is, I don't see how they can go back to Monty Ball when they're out there rushing for 100 yards versus the Jets, who are an elite run defense. When Monty exactly. Ball basically didn't even show up. So it, it exactly. it's hard to think that he'll lose that gig. I mean, and we never liked Monty Ball as a player anyways. I fucking hate right. the guy, So, but it was right. all about the situation. So if yes. Ronnie Hillman is the main beneficiary to the situation, Ronnie Hillman becomes extremely valuable. Yes, uh, agreed completely. Now, I don't necessarily believe in Ronnie Hillman's ability at the goal line quite as much as I believed in Monty Ball's. No, that'll be Juwan but, Thompson's work. Yeah, and that that's a little bit concerning. However, uh, if he's the RB1 in Denver, there is going to be an opportunity to put up fantasy points. And I understand there's still a pass-first offense, but this is the type of offense that is going to put up 400 yards every single week. Yeah, so, and, and frankly, for the Denver offense, Hillman probably is a better fit for than Monty Ball anyways because he's just shiftier. Not that he's enough. some crazy, talented running back. I right. hate Ronnie Hillman too, but right. he is probably better than Monty Ball, as sad as that is. A1 Ronnie Brown, or not Ronnie Brown, Monty Ball and Ronnie Hillman hater here is yeah, Dustin. I hate so both, but I, I he hate hates Ronnie both. Hillman of the less right now. So <laughs> lesser right. of the two right now is Ronnie Hillman. So right, they're right. probably going to ride with him. Number two on my list this week, Travis Kelsey. Uh, he's only owned in 47% of leagues still. I don't understand that. Definite rock solid tight end one going forward. Um, I'm assuming that he was dropped in a few leagues this week just because they were on a bye. Yeah. But regardless go out and pick up Travis Kelsey if he's available in your league I mean there's so many tight end injuries right now with Jimmy Graham and Vernon Davis still is doing meh yeah, and Travis and, you know, a top 10 tight end yeah and, and I mean even without that I still think he's startable over a lot of guys yeah. so uh definitely like Travis Kelsey going forward um and again he's another guy who's on my preseason sleepers list as well me 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 point to me uh, Mike Evans at number three, he's only owned in 61% of leagues. I'm assuming that's coming off of the injury situation. He missed week five with an injury, but he did score a touchdown this past week. Also scored in week four. He's also had at least four catches in every game that he's played this year. Tampa Bay's offense, like we talked about, not very good, but still sustainable for fantasy production at the wide receiver position, just because they're going to be down so much in so many games. Yep. Uh, Odell Beckham is my number four. We talked a little bit about him getting a little bit of an uptick with the Victor Cruz injury. Marcus Wheaton at number five. Now, Marcus Wheaton is somebody who, uh, he had a really down week this week, didn't yeah. really do much, I mean, but Steelers targeted 12 times. The Steelers haven't eclipsed 10 points, I think, in like three weeks or something like yeah. that. I mean, they're, that offense is beginning to just abandon ship, other than like yeah. Le'Veon Bell and Antonio Brown. I, I definitely hear where you're coming from on that, but when a, when a guy's getting targeted 12 times in a game and targeted numerous times near the red zone, yeah. the other thing, he was pushed out at the one-yard line yeah, on one play. Luck. So, I mean, he had a bad luck game. I mean, he very easily could have put up like a, a, a 12, at least in standard scoring leagues, so that's not too bad. And it's just all about opportunity here. I mean, if the guy's going to get targeted 10 times a game or more, I mean, eventually he's going to put up decent fantasy numbers. So I like Marcus Wheaton. Uh, number six, I have Mohamed Sanu. I, he would be higher if it weren't for the fact that I think once A.J. Green comes back and, yeah, and Marvin Jones greatly. comes back, he kind of becomes the wide receiver three there. So it's more of a for the next couple of weeks proposition with him. Number seven, I have Jarek McKinnon of the Minnesota Vikings, who actually received more touches this they week than Matt Asiata. Yeah. And we've been talking a little bit about that one. I mean, are, are you on board at this point with Jarek McKinnon being more valuable than Matt Asiata, or do you think it was just a one-week thing with them playing the Detroit <sighs> I, defense and maybe he's just a better matchup to go against it, it, up against that defense? It's tough to say I value them higher because I, I still think that no matter what happens as far as the carries go or the touches go, I still think Asiata is the absolute 100% guy at the goal line. And I true, don't think that changes. True. So I don't. True. I think his TD upside is is very very limited. 
Yeah, it's probably so, like four. Yeah, so it's it's really tough to really bank on a guy like that. I, I think I'd probably still prefer to own Asiata just based on TD upside. I can definitely see where you're coming from with that. I think McKinnon's the more skilled player. Oh, absolutely. And eventually they're going to be up against some some defenses that they can put some bo- points on the board against. So I I like him better just because I think once he gets that pass protection down, which I, I think he did better this past week than he yeah. has in any other previous game. So, you know, I, I think once he has that down a little bit better, they're going to give him more option or opportunities on third down. And that's really where I think his value becomes. If he catches four or five passes a game and he rushes for 50 yards, then yeah, he becomes PPR, a, a, a decent player. Yeah. So, you know, that's kind of what I'm looking for of Jarek Jer- McKinnon. Uh, number eight, I've got Allen Robinson of the Jacksonville Jaguars. He's caught at least four passes in each of his past five games. Now, no touchdowns, and Jacksonville's terrible. But, you know, if you're in a tough situation in a PPR league and you, you're missing Calvin Johnson and A.J. Green or something like that, yeah. you could do worse is all yeah. I'm saying here. Uh, number nine, I have Isaiah, Isaiah Crowell for the reasons we talked about before with him being the primary backup. Uh, number 10, Brandon Bolden. And I know... See, it's tough. I don't about James White. It's flip a coin yeah. and hope you get the right one, I guess. Exactly. For the right week. Exactly. I, I'm not sold on this, but I think based on the fact that uh, that Brandon Bolden can also play on special teams, that he's going to have a little bit more value than James White will in did this you, offense with Stephen Ridley being injured. Did you have That's James all Jones I'm saying. listed? Uh, James Jones, at this point, I think we've we've talked about him enough. I mean, certainly if James Jones is available in your league, let's so he had another let's good add game him. This last week, yeah, that's why but, he popped my mind. Um, but yeah, I mean, James Jones at this point is it, should, it be, should be owned in every league, league yeah. at, at this point. I mean, I'm I'm trying to keep it as fresh as I can, and and with you know guys like Ronnie Hillman, who I like I said should be owned in every league, but for some reason is owned in five percent of leagues. What the hell? Yeah. So you know that's kind of the situation there. Um, obviously we've got, we've got guys like that though, James Jones that, uh, and, and Brian quick who had a terrible game, but Brian quick really, r- really is He's probably going to be better though, going forward. Good. So, yeah. um, guys like that should be owned in every league as well. Last thing that I want to talk about today before we wrap up, uh, is some questions from Twitter. No, excuse me. We, we have questions from Twitter and then we're going to give you our buy low, sell high. Excuse me. So yep. we've got two more things here to talk about, uh, qu- questions from Twitter and make sure guys, if you haven't already done it, uh, hop onto, uh, Twitter and give at project KSL a follow and send him your questions send me your questions at click with tv and we will be glad to answer those of course you can always leave them in our comment section below if you have lineup questions for this sunday's games make sure that you ask them now and not yeah. after we do our next show because i won't be able to answer them on an additional show because we only do two per week so i hope that answers any questions that you guys have regarding that i usually still do respond to them in the twitter questions but uh and uh in the comment section but you know we won't be able to do it on the show so here we go. Questions from Twitter. We've got a couple of them this week. Um, I, I There were a few that were kind of stupid, and I didn't want to answer those. But uh, <laughs> no offense, guys. There are just some that are like, okay, uh, yeah, I'm not. we're not dropping Calvin Johnson at this yeah. point. Come on now. Fuck off. Um, Mark Ingram or Bishop Sankey going forward? And this is from <sighs> Mr. Serious 69 Nice nice username there. <laughs> um, <laughs> Mark Ingram coming back from an injury. Bishop Sankey, probably the RB1 going forward there in Tennessee. I'm going Mark Ingram here, just off of upside, yeah, I think. I, I mean, I, that's what I'm trying to think, who actually has the better upside, and I guess it would have to be Mark Ingram, so that's my choice by default, but yeah, I mean, kind of flip a coin, really. I'm not really high on either of them at this point, because yeah. New Orleans offense just looks not nearly what we thought it would be. Their defense is a complete train wreck. I think it's going to be interesting to see how they do without Jimmy Graham, because he has been such an important part of their offense for the past few years, and without him being on the field, there's a few guys that could benefit, and it could just be a complete disaster. Um, Benefits, possibly Marcus Colston, getting a few more touches. Colston Um, Cooks. Yeah, and and I'm more talking, like, because Marcus Colston maybe plays that Jimmy Graham role of going over the middle and being the big guy to create the physical matchups. Yeah. but uh, then also at the goal line, especially, which is where Jimmy Graham makes his money in that touchdown, uh, in the touchdown department, they might end up trying to run the ball more. And if yeah. they do, I mean, Mark Ingram is probably going to be the guy. When's he due so, back? Uh, it, it, I guess it doesn't necessarily say. It still sounds like he's questionable um, to play. So we really don't exactly yeah, know. 
a but, stuff thing. Maybe Pierre I, Thomas getting that carry. I don't know. New Orleans backfield yeah. is always so weird. It is. It is. But we liked Mark Ingram before he got hurt. Yeah. And I, I don't did, really but, think things change as far as that goes. Well, it, at that um, point, though, I still thought the Saints were going to get better. I thought the Saints were yeah. just underachieving at that point. Now it just looks like the Saints just kind of suck. True. So true. it kind of has changed my uh, excitement level for that offense as a whole. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, but I think I'm I'm going to go with Ingram just based off of, you know, yeah, high no, I think potential I touchdown I mean, upside. Just looks terrible in every right. of the, facet of the game. So, right. Yeah. And Sankey, although I do think he is uh, a guy that will be the RB1 going forward there, it, I mean, what does that really it mean? Borders like we talked Jacksonville about. Jacksonville and Tampa Bay right. territory or who really right. gives a shit. Yep, exactly. So, uh, I hope that answers that question for you. Next question is from Has has that many prob okay. at, at oh, uh, on Twitter, and he says, "Should I trade Mohamed Sanu for Eric Decker in a standard scoring league? If you can get Eric Decker for Mohamed yeah, Sanu, I'm doing it." Yeah, me too. I think yeah. Decker definitely has the higher upside, more long term, and yeah, long term really. player. Yeah. Yep. I, I think I for the next couple of weeks, Decker. if if you're in a situation where you need it for the next couple of weeks, I might like Sanu slightly better than eh, Decker. Maybe, but it's it's close and definitely long term right. upside definitely goes to Decker. Yes, exactly, and that's the big difference. Like we've talked about, and once once uh, AJ Green comes back and Jones is healthy, Sanu is most likely going to be the wide receiver three there, which makes him like the fourth most likely player to score a touchdown in that offense. Yeah. Uh, behind Gio Bernard and and maybe even maybe behind Jeremy, Jeremy Hill, Hill. Yeah. so uh, I, I mean that that makes his upside very very difficult. Whereas Decker might be the number one guy to score a touchdown on that offense, oh, abso- possibly uh, yeah, behind, is. possibly behind Ivory. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it's Decker. But yeah, I think it's Decker. Decker has done really well this year despite being in a terrible situation. There's hurt. nothing to not like. Yeah, and he's been hurt. So yeah, he's gonna get better. Yeah. So uh, he's gonna get better, and he's been good. So yep. there you go. Uh, hope that answers that question for you. Now, I want to get back to uh, our buy low and sell high options for the week because this is really the um, the one of the most important things that people need to remember as far as concepts and fantasy football go. We have to be selling players when their value is high. You don't sell a player like Russell Wilson after he has a terrible game. You don't buy a player like Tom Brady after he has a great game. It just it, you have to you have to be able to put those things in context because yeah. that is when their values are are skewed, and we want to be on the end that we're getting the better end of the deal going forward, or the perceived better end anyway. Yeah. So, Dustin, your sell high for this week. Uh, I want to hear what you have uh, as your sell high. Um, we sort of talked about him earlier when we were talking about the quarterbacks. It's Tom Brady. Like I said, he's had two go. good games. Out of, he's had two good games out of six, four complete duds. I don't think he's still. I, I don't think he's magically a good quarterback again. I think he's played two pretty, you know, uh, had, had two good games in back to back weeks. I think people are starting to buy into Tom Brady again. I'm not. So if you're like me, he's a prime time. If you still own him, like just send out offers there because some might, someone will probably value him a lot higher than you would. Right. You might then be able to get something significant. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I'm not buying into Tom Brady's a top ten quarterback. So, yep. you know, if someone out there does and you can get, you know, a decent running back if you need that or a wide receiver if you're dealing with an A.J. Green or a Calvin injury and someone has someone on their bench out there and need a quarterback, I think that's a definitely a good guy to try and sell high as Tom Brady. 100% agreed. Uh, he's a classic example of a guy who had a, a game who probably will not be able to per, to continue that. Another guy at, at quarterback, if somebody's buying Joe Flacco after what he did, please yeah. sell him. Yeah, exactly. Please sell him. <laughs> if, if Joe Flacco's <laughs> owned, yeah, try and, try and throw him out there. <laughs> all right um and, and, but the, honestly though that's about where i value tom brady not much higher than joe flacco yeah. right now seriously it's They're really that bad so yeah. um all right my sell high for the week is a guy who was my number one overall player coming into the season and it hurts me every single time that i have to talk smack about him but Lashawn mccoy 149 149 yards this past week no touchdowns only two catches in a blowout win kind of think that's his upside right now like as bad yeah. as it sounds i mean they're they're in such a bad situation on offense i mean they've got numerous injuries now everybody's gonna say yeah once they come back all their offensive linemen are gonna be back and they're gonna be back to being like those bruisers and i don't know if it's gonna be that easy it's it's deeper than just that he doesn't have blocking the guy's not making the cuts that he normally does he's not finding the hole that he did last year I, I don't love the fact that they're not using him in the passing game like they have in the previous years as well. Yeah, that's what's the more concerning thing to me is just, he's just not catching the passes like we thought he would. Yeah, I mean, I came into the year, I was expecting 60, 70 catches out of LaShawn McCoy, and he's maybe going to get 40. Yeah, maybe. Like, that's that's Marshawn Lynch numbers. 
Like I mean, we need more than that. When he comes, I mean, when I mean, he's without Evan Mathis and and Kelsey right now, who are two right. huge. I mean, they're elite offensive linemen. So when those guys come back, you would expect it to, but. We How expect it to better? get better, yeah. but at the same time, though, I think right now you're looking at a situation where LaShawn McCoy is coming off of really his first solid game since, what, week one, week two? Week two, yeah. Um, and, you know, we've seen, we've seen numerous games out of LaShawn McCoy where he just doesn't do anything from a fantasy standpoint. Darren Sproles being injured, people are going to view that as being, okay, LaShawn McCoy is going to start touching the ball 30 times a game. That is not going to happen unless they're winning games by... 40 points in the second quarter, LaShawn McCoy is not going to touch the ball 30 times, I don't think, in any game this year. So, um, you know, my opinion right now, you can still sell LaShawn McCoy for a very, very high-end player. You might still be able to get somebody like an Antonio Brown for him. And if you can um, yeah, swing you that, Brown, yeah. <laughs> if you can swing, uh, I'm, I'm not just saying him specifically. I'm talking about your elite wide receivers. Um, if you can swing him in exchange for an elite wide receiver after he had a big game, I'm doing that. I mean, if, yeah, I can, if, if, if you're down on a guy like LaShawn McCoy, now is definitely the time to sell him. I mean, after a game like that in prime time, where yep. everyone's saying LaShawn McCoy's back, LaShawn McCoy's back after that game. So, yeah, yeah if you're Let down the on media, him, definitely a week to sell. Let the media play into every trade that you make. Um, if, if you don't believe in a guy for whatever reason, let the media tell people how great he is and then you sell him at that point in time because that's really the best way to do it. Uh, buy low, the other end of things. My buy low for the week is DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah. Um, DeAndre Hopkins was easily the Texans' top receiver for the first five weeks of this season. He's had at least 11 points in each of those uh, first five games. The Texans are throwing 30 times per game right now. I just think, look, if he gets if he gets a third of those targets, let's say you know he's getting roughly a third of them, and and um, Andre Johnson's roughly getting a third, and the rest of the team's roughly getting a third. If he gets ten targets a week, I think that's pretty good. I think that you can definitely do better. Um, you you know you can definitely get a quality set of production out of a guy like DeAndre Hopkins versus a guy who's not going to receive nearly as many targets on a week to week basis. I, like I said, I, a couple of weeks ago, I, I'm high on DeAndre Hopkins. I think this guy can potentially be a top 25 wide receiver th- through the rest of the season. He only had one catch this past week, so yeah, that's going to be about dud. his low. Yeah, he was so, a dud this week. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with that. I think that he's definitely a guy you want to own to target in leagues right now. I, I do think Andre Johnson's role will get better. I, I think that he's still a very good wide receiver. But like you yeah. said, there's still enough targets to go around. And I think he's definitely like a premier option in that in that team. So. Yeah, I definitely like getting DeAndre Hopkins. All right, so who is your buy low for the week? Um, he hasn't really been talked about very much at all recently, but I, I'm still super high on him as far as fantasy goes for the rest of the year. It's uh, Ryan Matthews. who has been go. out for yep. a few weeks. You know, he's been missing time. Everyone's – Brandon Oliver hype train is unreal right now, which I'm still <laughs> not really buying into. Mini Darren Sproles. Yeah. I think Darren Sproles. I think as soon as he comes back, he's going to see all the carries again. He's going to be the workhorse, the bell cow like they thought he was. Yep. And he's he's going to step right into a premier offense that's scoring a ton of points right now on a very good team. I definitely think he's someone that you could ride and be a borderline RB1 once he, once he gets back and he's healthy. I agree. And and the other thing, too, that I think people are going to overvalue is they're going to think that um, that Oliver is going to just have Eat your Darren Sproul. Yeah, that he's gonna that he's gonna have a Danny Woodhead role, and I don't see that. First of all, Ryan Matthews is a better receiver out of the backfield than people give him credit for. Yeah, he can better. catch he can catch forty to fifty passes this year. Um, I mean, maybe not given the fact that he's missed as many games, but that pace at least through the rest of the season, you know, catching three three four passes a game, and there's no reason to think that he's gonna come off the field for third downs. He's yeah. going to be on the field most of the plays, like Dustin said. So I definitely like Ryan Matthews going forward. Um, I think I value him kind of, once he comes back at least, kind of right around where I value like a Ben Tate. So yeah. that's pretty solid uh, and even better in a PPR league as well. Yeah. So there you go, guys. Um, that is going to wrap up today's episode. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you learned something. If you did, make sure you press the like button below and press the subscribe button so that you can be updated when we put out our next episode. And remember, guys, if you have any questions about your lineup for this week's games, if you're thinking about making a trade and you need some consultation, if you have any general fantasy football questions, make sure that you leave them in the comments section below or send us a tweet at either Clickwood TV or at Project KSL. And, of course, send Dustin at Project KSL a follow as well. Mm-hmm. 
Good luck this weekend, guys. Be sure to check back, check back with us later this week for a preview of this weekend's games. And we will talk to you guys soon here again on the Fantasy Football Swagger Podcast. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.